because I, I I wasn't convinced of my original fourteen. All right, here we go. It's uh, you thought we were done with the power rankings. You thought wrong. We're doing power rankings still throughout the Never. play with Mikey B. Mikey B, yes. what's up? Yes. Yo, what up, dude? What up, dude? Are you sad? The season's over. I mean, I mean, you should be that sad. I mean, you're. I mean, uh, I'm in the still... I'm not sad. No, I'm actually happy my season's over because my team's fucking terrible. But you know, yeah, doo doo. Yep. Um. So I don't hear my. What the hell is that about? Anyway. Um. <laughs> so here's what happened now. Um. Normally we do top ten, bottom five, all that. Now the NFL we have 14 teams to playoffs. So we figured, you know what? Let's, instead of doing top ten, we're gonna rank all the 14 teams in the postseason right now. And then every week we'll do this. You know, next would be eight. There's a round. Then we will rank four, and then we will rank two for the Super Bowl. So, sure. um. So we figured just do a we'll do a, we'll rank all four the fourteen teams that are in the in the postseason right now, and we'll also do our our, uh, our final sad five. You know. All right, all right. Before we begin before we though, begin, though, let's do sad five first. Oh wait, wait, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, somebody. Stephen, uh, Stephen Ross, Ross word association game. Oh, this is gonna be fun. You're playing the role of Stephen Ross. I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Old white guy, rich. Okay, cool. Michigan. You are the owner of the Dolphins. You graduated from Michigan. You fired Brian Flores. Your goal is to get Jim Harbaugh, allegedly. Your goal is to win football games. To then get to the playoffs, to then win the Super Bowl. Correct. Your main priority is winning. The main organization is we, we, that we, you care about. The fans, I guess? The Dolphins. The main organization oh, you right, care right. about is the Dolphins. Okay, Dolphins, right, right. Why do you fire a coach who should have went 0 16, has a winning record, or a game, one game under 500, and then in your fucking press conference that you fired me, you say you're not taking Jim Harbaugh away from Michigan because you went to Michigan, you dumb sack of shit? Because I'm fucking stupid! That's why! I'm dumb! Stephen Ross Board Association game complete. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Well, the thing is, too, also, like, we even, a lot of people are, are a lot of people, like, nationally, because there's a lot of, like, narratives about, about this firing and stuff, they, they're not aware that the Chris Greer, um... He's an idiot, too. Fuck him. Right, right, right. I agree. The Chris Greer, Brian Flores relationship has been, has been kind of toxic, right, for a little while now. Buddy, they go together like fucking gasoline and fire. Right. Um, so, but I was surprised, like, I mean, heard rumors about, about Little whispers about maybe he came on the hot seat when it went when it went one and seven, then, but then they turned sure. things around and they were literally they were literally really a game away from making the playoffs. Here. You think about one it. And, one and seven. Their one win to start the year was against the team that ended up second in the division and making the playoffs. Right. They run off seven straight wins against basically nobody. Right. Right. Get within a game of the playoffs. I feel like the bigger concern here is, hey, we just found a way to win seven games with a scrub at quarterback. I think, and I, and I think that's really the main argument. Is a two argument. Brian Flores, for what we know, is not a Tua guy. No, not a Tua guy whatsoever. No, I think he'd rather have had Watson. I think he would have rather started Jacoby Brissett. I think he would have rather have gone almost any other route except not for Tua. Well, nine, yeah. Buddy, I think if you would have said at the trade deadline that, hey, you guys could acquire Matt Ryan mm -hmm. and draft picks for Tua, I think they'd have been like, yeah, all right. Brian Flores would have been like, give me Matt Ryan yesterday. By the way, if you watch it on YouTube, my son is here behind me playing toys on my head, so I apologize, but this is what I got to do to be podcasts sometimes on right. so he's home. So let's do the sad five first. Okay. Let's rest in peace to the five teams in my bottom, cool. our bottom five here. Um, and let's go backwards. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 actually, no, no, no. Let's go 2032 still, because we still need to. That's actually more. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go look my, uh, oh, here it is. Okay, cool. Let's go 28. 28, what you got? Uh, they knocked out the Indianapolis Colts. Give me, uh, Sunshine and the Jaguars. My, they finally did it. Carolina Panthers, 20, <laughs> <about> five. Buddy, <laughs> finally got. Gonna a, we're going to have a conversation about them real quick. Oh, yeah. 29. Uh, Give me uh, the probably one of the funnest names in football. Give me Amon Ron St. Brown and the Detroit Lions. Really interesting. He's in Texans. 
the reason why I have Detroit in my bottom five is because I'm also looking at the duration of the season and going into the offseason. Right. Jacksonville's in a spot. They have their franchise quarterback. Yes, they need to go get a fucking coach because right. Urban Meyer's right. an idiot. But right. there's building blocks there. Detroit, Absolutely. I don't trust Jared Goff. Their defense needs work. I do love DeAndre Swift. I do like Amon Ron St. Brown. Yeah. But I think there's some questions there. Right. Uh, 30? Deshaun Watson's never playing another game for this team. Just trade his fucking whatever for anything you can get for him. Give me Houston. So he went Jaguars. You know, that's a, that's a big win. Overall, they've been, they look fucking horrible up to like the like week 18. So 31. Uh, more questions than answers for this team. The Carolina Panthers. Ooh. 31 Jets. I don't trust Sam Darnold. I'll blame you. Christian McCaffrey's never healthy. Their defense is not good. Matt Rule is a fucking question mark at the head coaching position. I think there's more questions than answers in Carolina. And the thing with Matt Rule, too, also, he, this is a seven-year contract. This is a year two. Like, I, does, does Tepper really cut the court? I, I doubt it, but... I think I think he's a guy... Oh, he's got elbow dropped from the top rope. I saw that. Uh, and Saturday, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Go ahead. So, all I'm saying when it comes to Matt Rule is I think Carolina's an organization, and they, and they stuck with Ron Rivera for a really long time. Their ownership group is someone where when you sign a guy, like you have like a five to seven year window where you're like, this guy needs this many years to turn over the roster, bring in who makes sense for him, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Carolina is an organization that will stay with with whomever to fill that void, mm-hmm. whereas a team like Miami presses the panic button for some reason. And yeah, I don't, I don't get it. So I went 31 Jets, of course, yeah. but they got a better future than the Giants, though. 32. Back. The goddamn Giants. Can we like, like I I don't want to think about this team in September next year. Seriously, the Giants. And then Joe, the, Joe, Joe Judge is awful. Daniel Jones is awful. Your defense is awful. You paid fucking Kenny Galladay top five wide receiver money to play two games, and Kadarius Tony was hurt all year. The two number one receivers that you have scored approximately as many touchdowns as me and you did this year. Yeah, um, yeah, that- we have bigger problems than fucking uh, the coach. Yeah, and Gelman's retired yesterday. Joe Judge is still their head coach. I, I still think there's a chance that Joe Judge gets fired because if the new GM they get demands his own staff, it depends. It depends. The, the, the GM may get a band aid this year where it's just like you might move up your assistant GM for one more year and then go full in the next year whenever you can go right. get a couple of coaches. Because if Baltimore struggles and they fire Harbaugh, I would take him in a heartbeat. Right. Okay, here we go. Top 14. <laughs> here we go. Number 14, who do you got? Give me the rapist. Ooh. The Steelers. Yeah. Ooh. But I got them there, too. And to me, this is all about Mike Tomlin in discussion. Mike Tomlin, this team should even be 500, much honestly, less. Honestly, what it is, and, and brutally honest, is the defense. Because that, that offense is not good. No, not at all. That offense uh, gets enough to make the defense keep them in football games. Right. I agree. 13. Uh, E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. So do I. Eagles, uh, again, are you talking about Coach of Year surprise, Coach of Year, uh, like, candidates? I think Sirianni got to at least get a look I'm not saying he's going to win it, but this team should have been, was supposed to be, like, what, 2-15 and 15 this year, 3-14, and 14, and they're in the playoffs. Just saying. Pretty much. Pretty much. I, I know NFC East. I get it, but still. No one's had them being They this won game. a wild card. They didn't win the division. They still had to win however many. No, no, no I'm praying. No, I'm ready. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, sorry about that. Make, make it, make it the, no, uh, no, but what I'm saying is division or not. It, they didn't win that division. They won a wild card. Right, right. Yeah. I misspoke there. This kid here is No, no, no. You, no, you made the comment that about the division. Yes, they do play in the in the NFC East, and most of the time you only get one from that from that league. The right. problem is, is everyone wants to assume that the Eagles are the division champions. They're not. They won a wild card. Right. And teams like New Orleans for underperforming, Minnesota for underperforming, the Bears right. for being god awful. I mean, let's be real here. They got in because other teams struggled. As, as bad the East is every year, pretty much, uh, they took two teams. So, got to get pops for that one. All right, number 12, we got? Uh, wine me, dine me, 49er me. Wow, I'm a little surprised, actually. Okay, no, no, I... I Garoppolo with a thumb injury, I, I he got enough against the Rams. I, I don't know that I trust him with the thumb injury long term. Ooh, I mean, that's a good point. 
but that was a big ballsy win by that team and against a team that was playing for something huge. Oh, I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing that it wasn't a held win from them. But right. it, was be- it was because coming out in the second half, their defense found a way to stop Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup and got the ball back and let them run the football. This they is definitely ran the football so well in the second half. That's why they beat the Rams. We they clearly took the ball, they took the ball out of Jimmy Garoppolo's hand because it's fucked up and had Elijah Mitchell and Debo Samuel and Jeff Wilson Jr. run the football and they right. ran it effectively. I don't think long term that that's a game plan that they're going to be able to throw out there that's going to be successful. Well, this they're is a going, team. They're going on the road to Tampa, correct? San Francisco? No, they're going to Dallas. They're going to where? Dallas. Dude, if Dallas scores three touchdowns early in that game because of the explosiveness that- of Dallas's offense and they can't run the football and they make Jimmy Garoppolo throw. That's a fair point. Um,. I mean, I'm I'm gonna use bias to 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 be my guide here. I guess to some degree, um, but clearly this is the team you and I are pretty much really opposite on because I'm much higher on the Niners than you are. Uh, Twelve for me is the Raiders. Bing, Bing, Bing. God darn it! Anyway, Ding Raiders, Las Vegas. Um, can we talk about how Derek Carr's underrated? There you go. What you? I've said Derek Carr gets a lot of. Shit for no reason for the last three seasons. This motherfucker was, was, was my MVP until he got hurt like four years ago, five years ago. Uh, for the record, for the record, I have the Raiders at eleven. Okay, so we can we can continue the Raider talk. Yep. Um. Yeah. Can we talk about though how every every other organization in football <laughs> that goes through firing your head coach, having your number one wide receiver murder somebody with a vehicle going one hundred and eight thousand miles an hour. Yeah, that's pretty fast. To, pretty fast. To losing, to losing, arguably the greatest coach in the organizational history of the team, and John Madden, to then also not have your best offensive weapon the last four weeks of the season up until Week 18, and Darren Waller, uh, getting great games out of guys like Hunter Renfro and Foster Moreau and Josh Jacobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other organization, that team finishes seven games under 500. Yep. Yep, I agree. Derek Carr kept that team alive. And at the end of the day, a lot of people gave Derek Carr shit for what he said when Henry, Henry Ruggs did what he did about being there for Henry the individual. And they were like, wow, how could somebody do that? He did something so miserable and so terrible. Right. Because Derek Carr is a good fucking person. Yeah, he's a good human being. I love Stop Derek Carr. Stop fucking with Derek Carr. He's yes. a good dude. He wins football games. Stop hating on Derek Carr for being a good human being. More people need to be like Derek Carr. Leave Derek alone. <laughs> at this point, at this point, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, guess what? He's one of 14 quarterbacks that's playing in the fucking playoffs and has a shot to win his fucking first round game. And that's hard for me to say because he's playing my guys. Yeah, that's true. 11 for me is New England Patriots. They have softened the last month. They really something up. Mac Jones. I'm a little worried about Mac Jones now. A little worried. But you can't. You can't rely on your defense that much to keep fucking winning games. Right. You have to score. Yeah. And it's the problem. And I think the Pats are going to be one and done this weekend. Un- you know, unfortunately for them. Uh, number ten, you got. How about them Cowboys? Oh really? Come on, Jimmy. How about them Cowboys? Yeah! What? Um. I don't I don't love where they stand right now. I don't either. I'm a playing stock. Put up, they put up 50 on the Eagles secondary team and it's great that you got your offense into a rhythm going into the playoffs, which is what I think teams should do. Not saying that they did anything wrong on Saturday night. Mhm. Still too many questions about that offense. Yeah. If Tony Pollard doesn't play, do I trust Ezekiel Elliott as the only running back basically getting the carries there? No. Do I think that Dak Prescott presses at times? Yes. Do I think the loss of Michael Gallup long-term is going to hurt them? Absolutely. I think they're going to lose this weekend. I think they beat the Niners. I think they beat the Niners, but I think that they're a team that, depending on who they play in the second round, could get the doors absolutely blown off of them. Yeah, I'm not feeling about Dallas right now. I'm going into a Walker weekend. Number 10 for me is the Buffalo Bills. You're not thrilled about them, but you have them ahead of the Patriots and the Bills. Yeah, because I think they're a better team overall. I, if you're afraid that they're going to lose to the 49ers, how can a team that's going to win that game, either the Patriots or the Bills, 
be below a team that you think is getting eliminated. Because the Bills and Pats can go, 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 is neck and neck, in my opinion. That can still go, I mean, they, I, I texted you earlier today. Vegas nailed these fucking spreads. The only, they, the only one I hate, the only one I hate is the is the Cincinnati game. But I'll get there whenever I talk about that. Point thing. There's a lot of points. Yeah. Raiders playing though. We'll talk about we'll talk about it when we get to the Bengals. Okay. Uh, that's the tens of Bills. Not impressive against the Jets, by the way. Not impressive at all. No, no, that's not ending of that game. If you watch that game, that was a close game to the late in the fourth quarter. Correct. So, but again, I think the optics of the pet Bills and Pats are these teams are aren't playing good football right now overall, and it's gonna be someone's gonna, someone's gonna win by default. So that's why number nine. Give me the New England Patriots. Okay, so where are you on the on this team right now? Their defense is what's going to give them an opportunity to win games. If they right. get into a shootout with somebody, they're fucked. Yeah. They got the absolute best first round matchup for them because Cincinnati's offense is too explosive for them. Mm-hmm. The Chiefs will blow them out of the fucking water. Yep. The Raiders, I think, would give them fits offensively. Mm-hmm. The Steelers maybe would have been the absolute nut matchup for them, but there was no way they were getting that. Right. So Buffalo and the fact that Josh Allen one day can be what? the greatest armed quarterback in NFL history in the next game he can throw three interceptions. New England got the absolute best case scenario. Right. We're number nine now, right? Uh Pat Pat's one of my number nine team. Okay, number nine for me is How about them Cowboys? Yeah! I'm concerned. I, mean, I can't I can't and again they play the Eagles secondaries. I can't use that game as the oh well we're feeling ourselves now. No, but but it does help that they got into a rhythm. They did. It, it helped that they played that game at least the first three quarters because that offense started to get into a rhythm. Because here's the thing: they got against Washington, then they got then they got you know their ass kicked against Arizona the next week. So again, it's it's one week great next week. What the fuck, one week great next week. What the fuck? Okay, no, not yet, not yet. So Dallas Cowboys number nine for me. Uh, we'll see how they do against San Francisco. That's, that's the game week in my opinion. Number eight, who you got? Nobody circles the wagon like the Buffalo Bills. Again, like I said, not an unimpressive win against the Jets, but I mean, they got Josh Allen. I mean, let's see if they can figure it out this week. I'm more of a hey, they won the division, they did their job. I think that they're in a spot where they're going to be competitive if they get past New England with whoever they play in the second round, just based mm-hmm. off of the fact that Devin Singletary was figured, figured it out finally. Yeah, Josh Allen doesn't turn the ball over. Uh, they have a shot to stay with anybody that would be left in the second round. Right. Singletary playing well, actually, it's, it's a great time for them right now. They need Absolutely. that run. Absolutely. Well. Number eight for me is the Arizona Cardinals. Okay, I had them. I I thought you know if wait. they beat Seattle. Wait. Wait what? Yeah. What the I fuck do that. you have the Cardinals at eight and the Niners not ranked yet? Because the they, these two teams play right now, I think the Niners beat them. No. Yes. No. I saw what I needed to see on Sunday against Arizona, and Arizona is now playing like this now. They do this shit. Yeah, I, I told you we would be on opposite ends of this whole thing. Buddy, I don't know how you have the Niners anywhere near, like, <laughs> seven. Kyle's a love this shit, too, especially because Kyle loves the Niners. <laughs> then he'll say, it's too high, motherfucker. But, no, Arizona, they, dude, they are too inconsistent for my taste, man. And uh, who do you go in the Rams game? Who do you go with? I mean, ah, that's. I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, number seven. Who day? Give me the Bengals. Yeah. yeah, and that game didn't mean much on, on Sunday at all. Funny, Brandon Allen played quarterback, and Joe Mixon didn't play. Right, that didn't mean anything. All it meant, all it meant was that we are the four seed instead of the three seed. Yeah, right. Whoop de do, Basil. Let's go. And he actually, to be honest, I think he's a better matchup anyway. Probably a better matchup, I think. Right? Oh, whenever, whenever I was watching the game, I texted Craig because because he was he was out and I was at the house. Right. And I told him, I said, I don't care. I hope Vegas wins because if they tie or the Chargers win, we get New England. Rather play Raiders. I would much, and I would much rather have the Raiders because guess what? The line is six, Vegas. Let's not forget Cincinnati went to Oakland this year, beat them by 20. We're about to see our first Bengals playoff win in a long... Oh, don't, don't jinx me. Don't jinx me. Okay, okay. I won't do that. <laughs> I told you three weeks ago when I put Cincinnati in my top 10. Don't talk about them. Goal one, win the division. Goal two, win a playoff game. Goal three, 
go as far as you can. And if you don't make it to the Super Bowl or you get knocked out in the next round by Kansas City or Tennessee, you know what you do? You take it as a win because you were a team that was supposed to hover around 500. You weren't supposed to win this division. And you were in a spot where you should have lost this division if Lamar Jackson doesn't get hurt. Bro, you guys are house money. You guys are supposed to be last place this year, remember? Gamble. Come on. Here's the thing. Jamar Chase, rookie of the year. Zach Taylor, coach of the year. I don't care what you say about Bruce Arians. I don't care what you say about Matt LaFleur. They're supposed to be there. No, oh, Zach Taylor. I mean, no, who's arguing that? The only, only, only person in the, in the conversation is, is, in my opinion, is Mike Vrabel. Sure. I, I, can, I can live with that. That is it. And, 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 but, but here's the thing. You, Zach Taylor deserves more conversation about coach of the year than probably anybody else outside of Mike Vrabel and maybe Mike Tomlin. Right. Agreed. All right. Seven for me is those Niners. I am probably much harder than most. Than most. Because I think they're the most dangerous team in the NFC bracket. I think I think nobody, including the Green Bay Packers, wants to play them at all. I don't know about most dangerous. I'm willing to say that they're the most. I'm not even to say the word complete. I'm going to say that they're the most together. Their run game is the most complete out of anybody in the NFC. And the fact that their defense is playing as well as it is, mm-hmm. they can they can limit possessions very quickly. And with explosive offense like Tampa Bay and mm-hmm. Green Bay and, and, and the Rams, those teams don't need a lot of time to score. Right. But giving them the ball six times instead of eight times or nine times and a half, it, it can be a difference maker. And I think that's why the Niners' run game will be the reason why they stay competitive if they can get past Dallas. Right. All right, number six for you. I'm going to put Arizona here. Okay. Um, we'll reset here. I, I still think I still think that, that while they're playing up and down, they're a team that at any point can go off for 60, and their defense can hold somebody to 20. It, it all depends – like. Their team format, like, yes, James Conner got hurt, was out the last two weeks. Chase Edmonds played really well. And then Chase Edmonds gets hurt, and James Conner comes back and plays fairly well against Seattle, all things considered. Right. Here's the thing, and this Uh is the same thing I said whenever the Chargers-Raiders game started. Mm -hmm. Week 18, I don't care if I'm 1-14 in or 1-15 in playing for nothing, or I'm 11-5 and 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 I'm playing for a division. I don't want anybody in my division beating me. Agreed. And that was what Seattle came out and said. If this is Russell Wilson's last dance as a member of the Seahawks, I guarantee you'd rather go out with a win than a loss. So you were getting Seattle's best no matter what. Familiarity is advantage to a lot of teams. Just saying. Week, eight, week, week 18 for division titles and keeping division opponents out. The Chargers don't want to see the Raiders get in. The Raiders don't want to see the Chargers get in. They don't want anybody from their division in. Right. In the event. But let's be real. You don't want you don't want to see anybody in your division. I agree, one hundred percent. All right, number six, six. Um, six was uh, the Cardinals for me. I can't believe I'm actually higher than this team, and you are. Who day? Uh, and I think the reason why you're higher is because I've lived Carson Palmer, I've lived Andy Dalton, I've lived Marvin Lewis finding a way to squander playoff chances. Hey, I, hey, I, I don't. I live Boomer Esiason. That count for anything? But what you're ta- but what but you said the key word in, in your in, in, when I talked about them house money they're playing with house money it's very easy for them to hey we beat the Raiders by twenty five or twenty the last time we played them in Vegas a whole new fucking offense you're a whole new game plan now yeah at the end of the day I think I I, I want to believe that they're gonna come out on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And Joe Mixon is going to run the ball down fucking Vegas' throat. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow is going to find Jamar Chase. And we're going to win by 30, and that game's never going to be in question. And it's on to Tennessee, or it's on to Kansas City, or it's on to Buffalo. I, I don't care. Who, like, at the end of the day, goal number one when it comes to the Cincinnati Bengals is the 22 guys that are going to be on the field for Vegas. Don't think about anything else. Run your game plan. Don't turn the ball over. Get everything you can out of Joe Mixon. Right. And let the chips fall where they do. 
I'll tell you what, it, it, it will show me a lot of maturity if they can come out focused and just win this game in, in the way they're supposed to, basically the same way they won it in Vegas a, a month and a half ago. So, it'll show me a lot. All right, number five. You did it. You fucking did it, didn't you? Who do you think I have here? Rams. Yep. Guess what? Me too. And and you've said it all year. I've been the guy that hasn't hit the panic button on the on the Rams. It's time. It's not time. Ooh. Michael. It's it's time for everyone to stop with the fucking Matthew Stafford narrative. He is a top five quarterback out of the 14 teams that have qualified for the playoffs. That, I, I think, yeah, Rodgers, Mahomes, Brady. I'm ready, put, I'm ready to put fucking, what's his face, Burrow in there too, to be honest with you. But what I'm getting at is, if you look at the quarterback play that's going to be playing in the, in, in the playoffs, there's maybe four that you would take over Matt Stafford right now. The question is, is Matt Stafford hasn't won a playoff game. Matt Stafford throws too many interceptions. Matt Stafford, Matt Stafford, Matt Stafford. It's a gunslinger. We get it. It's Sean McVay. He oh. threw the ball 197 million times with Jared Goff at quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's not a Matt Stafford problem. It's a Sean McVay doesn't run the ball enough problem. Daryl Henderson, Sony Michelle. Like a, like a bounce. Like a bounce. Turning Cam Akers. Run the football, control the clock, let Cooper Cup run open, and don't miss him. The loss of Robert Woods has hurt this team immensely. They've looked bad throwing the ball at points without Robert Woods on the field. And it's not a slight on Cooper. It's not a slight on Odell Beckham. It's not a slight on Tyler Higby. It's a fact of the matter is that Robert Woods is the vertical threat that keeps the middle of that field open for guys like Cooper Cup and Higby to run against fucking linebackers. And right. At the end of the day, you don't have that. Odell Beckham has done a great job as a member of the Rams okay. of trying to fill in for Robert Woods. But you have a defense that is as good as theirs. Jalen Ramsey. Aaron Donald. Mm -hmm. You had an opportunity to step on the throat of a division rival and keep them out of the playoffs. You let them run the ball down your throat. Mm -hmm. This isn't an offensive problem with the Rams anymore. You're paying all those guys on defense. Time for them to step the fuck up. Yeah, I'm with you. You said said it better than I did, honestly. And um, I think we the staff thing is a little bit overblown, in my opinion. ESC does does a lot of picks, but I think the lack of balance definitely is a thing. I I actually tend to agree with you on that one. All right, number four. Chiefs. You knocked down one spot, you know, you won in Denver? You like what you you saw, did you? (laughs) Buddy, they look god awful. Buddy, they look god awful against Drew Locke. I know, I know, you're right. No, they did look, they look pretty awful. Eh. <laughs> they have no run game. No, uh, and and the the the, uh, the Hilaire injury, if he's not back for the playoffs, that that could be something we look at. Dude, Williams and McKinnon scared nobody. But this is also why Tennessee's high in my rankings. There's n- the only team, in my opinion, that you know on reputation could run away with the AFC is the Chiefs, and yet, and yet. They have all these little issues here that make them vulnerable, which is why Tennessee's in my in my top, in, you know, in my top my top five, you know, maybe for that. And in fact, Tennessee's number four for me, you know. And the only reason Tennessee's my number four is because of that, you know, that bowling ball motherfucker, Derek, you know, Henry. He's hit. and 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 they got the break they needed. They got the bye week. They got it. So now, oh, Henry gets the next another week off now to heal up. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm with you. Who's your four? Wait, wait. You had you had uh, four. four. Who's three for you? I put the Chiefs at four. So Titans. I see Titans. It wasn't ugly. It wasn't a pretty win against Houston. Let's be clear about that. But the visual wins. Buddy. The games are weird. Buddy. Here, here. Let's let let Stephen Ross Ward Association game. I wish I could have back Ryan Tannehill. I was a Tannehill guy, so I mean, I'm I'm. That's buddy. He's a lot better than the other options they have there in fucking Miami right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, buddy, they win the division that they should have lost in Indianapolis because of DeArta Freeman. 
Mm-hmm. If Derrick Henry comes back and plays at 50% and Freeman plays at 100% and they can control the line of scrimmage, something that Mike Vrabel will love, they're hard out against anybody. And they probably won the Super Bowl because it's, it's only two wins, not well, three. No, well. But again, the, the, what, what, what I've been saying last couple weeks, the Titans up here because of the environment they're, and Derrick Henry. They're, 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 they may be in trouble. Which is Cincinnati the team? Pat, if Cincinnati passes through Oakland or excuse me Vegas and gets Tennessee in in, in the second round, that's gonna that's gonna be well, a Cincy, so. Since the team in the AFC that can that can give Tennessee problems, you're saying the matchup wise from from a complete roster right now, yes, because I don't trust the treat the Chiefs run game. If I'm Tennessee, I'm rooting for New England to pull the upset and have right. Cincinnati play Kansas City again mm-hmm. in Arrowhead. Mm-hmm. And not have to play either of those teams until the AFC title game. Perfect road for Tennessee is that it is a Patriot win because then the earliest you'll see Kansas City or Cincinnati is the AFC title game. Well, three for me is uh, a team moved up, is uh, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. But I am concerned, though. I am concerned. I am concerned. Um, they, I mean, that's not what I'm shaking. That's not what I'm shaking my head at. Oh. What are you saying about? I have, I have, I have the Buccaneers too. So I, I'm shaking my head at, at, at the fact that you have, somehow, have found oh. a way to put the Chiefs in your top two when they don't have a body. Look, god awful against fucking Denver, and they have no run game. Well, according to Big Jim, they're my favorite team of all time. So, buddy, they could be your least favorite team of all time. I, I don't understand how you realistically can look at that roster right now and go, you know what? Fuck it, they're the best team in the AFC. Because Pat Mahomes, motherfucker. That's why. And I, look, I can be proven wrong. Pat and, and, Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, two weeks ago, looked like me playing quarterback against Cincinnati. He looked even fucking worse against Denver. By the way, his brother's an asshole. For the record. Fuck his... You see, you, see him, you see him on Saturday? Buddy, I hope his brother gets hit by a nuclear warhead. Ever since he fucking danced on the fucking memorial of Sean Taylor in Washington, that kid can go fuck himself. There's that, there's the fucking shit with the bar, and now this crap. Fuck him. Buddy, you're talking, to, you're talking about a guy who grew up in Virginia. Lived in Virginia when Sean Taylor was murdered. Right. Watched him multiple times at FedEx Field. And you have the fucking audacity to dance on his fucking memorial and go, I didn't know. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. I'm with you. So two for you is the Bucks. Funny. Two Funny. for me, the Andy Reid Kool-Aid man. And uh, the Chiefs and all that. Uh, number one is obviously easy. A. A. Ron Rodgers. Charles Rodgers. Packers also two number one. Um, this is actually easily our longest power rankings uh, podcast we've done this year. Well, yeah, because we're, we're we're breaking down everything. We're breaking it down, motherfucker. And we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give my formal predictions because I know you do your gambling thing. No, no, go, 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 go. Uh, give me Rams. Rams. Cowboys. Buccaneers. In the NFC. In the AFC? Chiefs. Bengals. Bills. I like it. The only one I disagree with you on is the, the, the Cowboys one. I, I, I think San Francisco wins that game. I think I, 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 I don't like what I see. That's the, that's the match that they, they don't. Not. If they don't run the ball effectively, though, they're putting themselves in a bad spot. True. I agree with you on that one. So, anyway. Mikey, we'll see you Thursday on the Take the Rest of the Podcast as we uh, were doing this week a watch along, right? Of a Roy Rumble 1992, the Ric Flair moment. Yep. Uh, arguably considered the greatest Roy Rumble of all time, arguably. Um, and then, in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> with a tear in my eye! This is the greatest moment of my life, really. You had Charlotte and, and eight kids. What are we talking about? Anyway, um, and uh, we're going to do our uh, Tom Hall meeting on. On hashtag fuck Bret Hart because uh, our good friend Big Jim James he's coming to show we're gonna he's gonna re- be able to rebuttal your you and Joe's fucking crazy. I might, I might I might be making an appearance on their podcast. At least I'm giving them my rankings. I don't know yet. We'll see. I'll fuck the gym this week. <laughs> Has, hashtag fuck Bret Hart. Um, follow me on Twitter at they call me Burn. Uh, follow the show if you're a wrestling fan at Take Number Three Wrestling Pod. Or no pot at the end, just at Take Three Wrestling. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> My head's all over the place. A lot of gym um, this week too. We're gonna have a lot of gym this week. I'm on his show tonight. He's been on our show on Thursday. You're gonna be on his show on Thursday. I might, I might be on his show Thursday. We'll see. So, 
A lot of gym. Um, yeah, so uh, other than that, uh, enjoy this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week where we go over the, the last uh, eight teams remaining and yeah. one of this thing down until we host a Super Bowl champion. It's going to be fun. We'll see. Anyway, buddy, we'll talk to you soon. Later, bud. Later.